I can go to South America. Are you packed? You want to yeah, show me? Packed. I think we've been packed, dude. Short socks, long socks, undies. Biggest essential, chonies. You gotta have a plethora of chonies in order to go to South America, uh, along with a plethora of socks. Yeah. That's all. My sock bag burst up. That sucks. So, you know, you get to here, and then you just go. And then you just slide it right in. Right? I do need to look up the temperature, like how much warm clothing should I bring? After a four month break, the band and crew are in LA preparing for the Latin American leg of the tour. With the extended break, there's a lot of work needed to get the equipment in order and return to a performance ready state. So we're making sure that all of our ducks in a row and we're not carrying any erroneous crap that we usually build up all the time. And fixing broken things, which happened all the time. Every time I've heard this acoustic recording, all I hear is Danny, like I can't hear you on the chorus. So I've tried putting a little more gruff into it and you try... Vocally? Uh, vocally. You, no, you back off, try to like sing it. Just normal. Yeah, like smoother and not so shouty. What, what's made it feel better is we're freighting everything, so theoretically that makes our life a lot easier. Normally, they will fly with all their equipment as checked baggage but many of the countries on this run have unique customs regulations, so they have opted to send the equipment via airframe. We're dropping it off and someone else is gonna drive it to, the, to each venue for us, which is great. And it only costs a small fortune. This will be the first tour since Jesse and Rachel's daughter, Eve, was born in January. It's gonna be gone for about a month and She's still so new, so. Sorry. I just, I don't want him to miss anything. And she changes so fast that I'm afraid he's gonna miss important things. In 2015, the band played a string of festivals in South America. Although this is their second time in many of these countries, it will be their first headlining show in most cases, which will give them a realistic idea of the size of their fan base. After an overnight flight, they have some time to get their bearings and do some press before the first show the following day. I don't have service. My phone doesn't work. I can't make calls. I can't get emails. Data is not working. Texting is not working. I love the fact that I <laughs> traveled halfway across the planet to talk to T fucking mobile. <laughs> Stand up. Take me to your leader. Sit down. And tell me about your freedom. Most of the shows are two days apart to allow for travel, press and promotion activities for the band, as well as enough time for the gear to be packed up, trucked to the airport, and flown to the next city in time for load in and sound check the following day. It's only been a day or two. Um, the anticipation of leaving was much worse, actually. But we have FaceTime, you know, so... I already like, talked to her like four times. That's the shot I like. There we go, sideways. <laughs> My two girls. She gives me reports on how the baby's pooping and <laughs> eating and all that stuff, so... I kind of feel like I'm there without the smell.
Tonight's model should bring. As everyone gathers in the hotel lobby, they learn the bad news. The cargo plane carrying all of their gear was held up for unknown reasons and will not make it in time for the show. Uh, our equipment got united. Oh, awesome. He got here? No, <laughs> he won't be here. That's Mo in a nutshell. He's like optimistic. When you mean clearly everyone sit well, down for some bad news. <laughs> so we're gonna miss the show. No, we're gonna do the show. Not only do they have to find and rent all the instruments and gear in time for sound check, they also have multiple TV and press commitments spread out around the city. It's not a very usual instrument to rent. Normal rental companies didn't have an accordion. So it was a friend of mine who said, uh, my father used to play the accordion. He, I think he has one somewhere in his house. Thank you. Obrigado. Really nice. It's a nice old Italian accordion. Silvano, tudo bem? Tudo bom? Quer entrar para? With one major hurdle crossed, they still have to integrate the rental equipment into their production. Fuck. It won't go into play later. Yeah. yeah. I really hope it goes well because Brazil fans are kind of nuts here. I say hello. Hello, Tina. I'm trying to get a hair like yours. <laughs> now I have a, a better hair. Oh, my, bad. my hair is better than Zila. Look. A lot of them have been like looking forward to this since the last time we were here, so. Technical issues. Not ideal, especially when the first time in, back in the country, and like, so it's not the kind of impression you want to leave, or it's not the state you want to be in to go do a show like that. How was the show last night? It was awesome. It was very encouraging. I feel like reminders like this occasion that we need that music and this career can be fun and enjoyable. Well, how the fuck did we get away with that anyway? That was kind of a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, that was just, everyone took pride in their jobs, you know? And they're like, just wanted to make it happen. Because we spend so much time like bitching and complaining and dealing with bullshit, you know, all the business side of things. And we play a show like that and you just remember like, ah, this is why we do this. That and money. Did you make some money? No. <laughs> Following the close call with the gear not making it to Sao Paulo the day before, the band and crew are relieved to find that everything has arrived in Santiago. Five sides, stars, burly, or virtue, a char, fashion, is law, and main, and trim, I always sing that song before shows. I don't jinx myself by saying this, but it's because there's so many fucking words in that verse that I'm always worried about forgetting them, so I just like drill it in my head like I'm 
studying for a final or something. Dot 100 and me, commanded to procreate, pressing for 40 days and death if you desecrate. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No, it just sounds like kind of mumbled gibberish. So I used to go, I don't know if I have it. Repeat, repeat after me. Rip <laughs> As a first visit to Chile, everyone is happy with the show and the successful planning of a seed for future visits and festivals. Well, it's your birthday tonight. In 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Are we partying tonight? Yeah. Good. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Did something change? No. 20 second travel to Peru. Nope. <laughs> it's 6 a.m. <laughs> what time is it? It's not 11 a.m. Let me call it 6 a.m. Let me call What time is it right now? 3.19. Fuck. So what time is it, Meg? Just gone 6 a.m. It's ten past six. We're waiting for the remnants of the birthday party to arrive in the lobby <laughs> so we can make our way at the airport. How you feeling, mate? Feeling rough. Really rough. Who's next, I do think? Is it going to be G, Jason, or Danny? Okay. I think it's probably going to be Jason. Good morning. Good morning. I made it. <laughs> Jeez, how's the rest of the night? Did you get some smooches? <laughs> <laughs> what are you making? Some sleeping medication. <laughs> Morning. of no activity or obligations prior to show day, and having heard again and again about the culture of food in Lima, the guys seek out a traditional Peruvian restaurant. I got the guinea pig. You got the guinea pig. I got the lips and arsles, the guinea pig, and the blood sausage. This is like very fluffy Portuguese potato bread. Chicken liver is weird. Chicken hearts are a bit weird. Everything else is fucking great. 
Is the guinea pigs good? Yeah, man. It's really good. It's pretty good. You had it too? We choose to go out to dinner all together. Yeah. That is not normal as a crew. So many crews fucking hate each other because some dude's leaving his bunk socks in other people's bunks. We'll get there. <laughs> One LS9 today. An idiosyncrasy of Lima is the multiple standards of electrical power across the city. Some neighborhoods are on 220 volts. Some are on 110. The venue appears to be on both. You make sure there's no voltage between his guitar strings and his microphone. Because there's no ground. Because there's no ground on the 110, but hopefully there's a ground on the amplifier, which I don't think there is, man. I hate today. As the only one with significant electrical training, it all rests on Mick to find a workaround to make the show not only possible, but safe. Well, you saw the movie Almost Famous, possibly. There's a bit where he walks on stage and they're rocking out and he walks up to his mic and grabs it and fucking electrocutes himself and nearly dies and they call, pull the gig and all that. That could potentially happen here. So we need to make sure that we have a solid ground somewhere for him. Two languages I don't understand today. <laughs> Spanish and electricity. I've never done the uh, heart attack on stage, so we'll find out today. One of the most enthusiastic crowds we ever played to. And they just had such a good time. They weren't just like raucous, they were just having fun. It's uh, contagious. All the power issues were worth it. We thought they weren't going to be worth it, but they were. <laughs> Yeah, it's fucking amazing. Despite the lack of support from their label back home, the band kept very busy with press and media coverage throughout Latin America. A great sign for their goal of developing a touring base there. Hola, hola, MTV News. Yo soy María Giraldo y no adivina con quién estoy. Estoy con Congos. Guys, thank you for coming out with me now in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> You've been planning that one for a long time. None of us should come out again. <laughs> Chills at a concert in a long time. I honestly think that might have been the best crowd we've ever played. I've never seen that before. It has been awesome. one of the best tours we've ever done. Just the consistency of every fucking city and every country we come to has just been incredible. I almost feel bad for Mexico <laughs> because, like, everything. Well, unless Mexico blows them out of the water, but I just don't see how they could. I 
got a little <laughs> gift for the baby. Something I could say I got from Mexico. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're breaking my heart. Ba, 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 ba. I ran out of t-shirts to wear as my lost. That's the wall. I actually have one spare in my back. But the, I have a tank top, I was gonna wear that, but Dylan's already wearing a tank top, so we have a one tank top rule in the band. <laughs> <laughs> not kidding. <laughs> Can't have more than one tank top on stage. Otherwise, you're the tank top band. Only one tank top on stage at a time. Yeah. Whoever puts it on first. It's like a fedora. Like in a group of friends, you can only have one person wearing a fedora. You can't have two people wearing a fedora. If you do, one of you have to die. <laughs> if not both. <laughs> One for doors pushing. Three minutes till showtime. This is our last show. Last show in Mexico. How has Latin American run been? Pretty fucking amazing, actually. It's been awesome. I would say one of our best, you know, crunch time tours. As in, like, you know, crazy travel days and not much sleep. This has been far more intimate and responsive, I guess. We've really connected with the audience, and every day is better upon better upon better, so. It's 3.30, 3 3.15 in the a.m. Yeah, he's there, you can see him. <laughs> he has no idea that the window's like... Props goes to Danny for living life to the fullest. Yeah. <laughs> After a year of uncertainty, the Latin American tour was a turning point for the band, and they returned home with a sense of optimism and renewed energy. So I said the world will be tamed. Fall in love and feel some pain. It don't matter, it's all the same. When you're here. I'll see you, uh, if I don't see you this weekend, I'll see you in Memphis. Alright, maybe Next time on Bus Call. We're gonna be booking it today, especially with the short hands with Mick and Mo being gone. We've gone weeks sometimes, you know, where two people aren't talking or can't even barely even look at each other and you still gotta go on stage. You started that, Jesse! You made it personal! Go fuck off! Kills any potential for any joy. What's it like having a band of brothers for sons? Shit. <laughs> <laughs>